Welcome to Old Treasures Made New, your devotional podcast on the go or at home, where we read the scriptures and reflect on them with those from the past. Today we'll be reading Matthew 2, verses 13 to 23, and then through J.C. Ryle's expository thoughts on Matthew. Please take a moment to pause and ask the Holy Spirit to bring understanding to apply what we hear. Matthew, chapter 2, verses 13 to 23. Now when they departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. And he rose, and took the child and his mother by night, and departed to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet, Out of Egypt I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, became furious, and he sent and killed all the male children in Bethlehem and in all that region who were two years old and under, according to the time that he had ascertained from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, weeping and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children, She refused to be comforted because they are no more. But when Herod died, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Rise, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel, for those who sought the child's life are dead. And he rose and took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judea in place of his father Herod, He was afraid to go there, and being warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee. And he went and lived in a city called Nazareth, so that what was spoken by the prophets might be fulfilled, that he would be called a Nazarene. This is the word of the Lord. Observe in this passage how true it is that the rulers of this world are rarely friendly to the cause of God. The Lord Jesus comes down from heaven to save sinners. And at once we are told that Herod the king sought to destroy him. Greatness and riches are a perilous possession for the soul. Those who seek to have them know not what they seek. They lead men into many temptations. They are likely to fill the heart with pride and to chain the affections down to things below. Not many mighty, not many noble are called. A rich man will enter into the kingdom of heaven with difficulty. Do you envy the rich and great? Does your heart say, Oh, that I had their place and rank and substance? Beware of giving way to the feeling. The very wealth which you admire may be gradually sinking its possessor down into hell. A little more money might be your ruin. Like Herod, you might run into every excess of wickedness and cruelty. Take heed and beware of covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. Do you think that Christ's cause depends on the power and patronage of princes? You are mistaken. They have rarely done much for the advancement of true religion. They have far more frequently been the enemies of the truth. Put not your trust in princes. Those who are like Herod are many. Those who are like Josiah and Edward VI of England are few. Observe how the Lord Jesus was a man of sorrows, even from his infancy. Trouble awaits him as soon as he enters the world. His life is in danger from Herod's hatred. His mother and Joseph were obliged to take him away by night and flee into Egypt. It was only a type and figure of all his experience upon earth. The waves of humiliation began to beat over him, even when he was a nursing child. The Lord Jesus is just the Savior that the suffering and sorrowful need. He knows well what we mean when we tell him in prayer of our troubles. He can sympathize with us when we cry to him under cruel persecution. Let us keep nothing back from him. Let us make him our bosom friend. Let us pour out our hearts before him. He has had great experience of affliction. Observe how death can remove the kings of this world like other men. The rulers of millions have no power to retain life when the hour of their departure comes. The murderer of helpless infants must himself die. Joseph and Mary 
hear the tidings that Herod is dead, and at once they return in safety to their own land. True Christians should never be greatly moved by the persecution of man. Their enemies may be strong, and they may be weak, but still they ought not to be afraid. They should remember that the triumphing of the wicked is but short. What has become of the Pharaohs and Neros and Diocletians, who at one time fiercely persecuted the people of God? Where is the enmity of Charles IX of France and Bloody Mary of England? They did their utmost to cast the truth down to the ground. But the truth rose again from the earth and still lives, and they are dead and rotting in the grave. Let not the heart of any believer fail. Death is a mighty leveler and can take any mountain out of the way of Christ's church. The Lord lives forever. His enemies are only men. The truth shall always prevail. Observe, in the last place, what a lesson of humility is taught us by the dwelling place of the Son of God when he was on earth. He dwelt with his mother and Joseph in a city called Nazareth. Nazareth was a small town in Galilee. It was an obscure, retired place, not so mentioned as once in the Old Testament. Hebron and Shiloh and Gibeon and Bethel were far more important places But the Lord Jesus passed by them all and chose Nazareth. This was humility. In Nazareth, the Lord Jesus lived 30 years. It was there he grew up from infancy to childhood, and from childhood to boyhood, and from boyhood to youth, and from youth to man's estate. We know little of the manner in which those 30 years were spent. That he was subject to Mary and Joseph, we are expressly told. That he worked in the carpenter's shop with Joseph is likely probable. We only know that almost five-sixths of the time that the Savior of the world was on the earth was passed among the poor of his world and passed in complete withdrawal. This was truly humility. Let us learn wisdom from our Savior's example. We are far too ready to seek great things in this world. Let us seek them not. To have a place and a title and a position in society is not nearly so important as people think. It is a great sin to be covetous and worldly and proud and carnal-minded. But it is no sin to be poor. It matters not so much where we live as what we are in God's sight. Where are we going when we die? Will we live forever in heaven? These are the main things to which we should attend. Above all, let us daily strive to copy our Savior's humility. Pride is the oldest and commonest of sins. Humility is the rarest and most beautiful of graces. For humility, let us labor. For humility, let us pray. Our knowledge may be limited. Our faith may be weak. Our strength may be small. But if we are disciples of him who lived in Nazareth, let us at any rate be humble. That is the end of Ryle's expository thoughts on these verses. Let us carefully consider what we heard today. And may the Lord be pleased to bring the growth for his glory.